Hello everybody, I'm here with uh, a new topic related to multi-degree of freedom systems uh, as it relates to vibrating systems. And uh, first of all, what is the definition of multi-degree freedom systems? Or uh, ju let's just go through this. Systems that require more than one independent coordinate to describe their motion are called multi-degree freedom systems. So if they need two, that would be two degree of freedom. And usually we write it like that. Two DOF means degree of freedom. Uh, if they need three, then that would be three degree of freedom. So number of degree of freedom system on this next uh, line here, I said, is the minimum number of independent coordinates to specify the position of all its elements. The elements are what? The elements are the masses. So here is an example of a two degree of freedom system here. Because you see we need uh, one, one uh, coordinate to take care of the position of mass one here, and one coordinate x2 to take care of position of mass number two. So that's a two degree of freedom system. Look at the pendulum example here. This is a one degree of freedom system that we've already considered. So we could calculate the natural frequency and the position of this mass and so on. And the coordinate that you need is theta. Remember here in the example here, x1 and x2 are the coordinates. So that's why we have two degree of freedom system. Here one degree, theta would take care of it. In this example below here, uh, you have this bar, uh, pivoting about this point and two springs are attached to it. Again, one degree of freedom because all you need is the angle theta to tell you everything about the position of this rod. Now, on the other hand, if you look at this other example underneath here, if you have a bar like this, what, how many degree freedom you have here? Because this guy can translate down or up and uh, it could rotate. So now if you, for example, if you just zoom on, say, if the center of gravity was here, you could say, okay, this guy is going to go up or down. So that's one uh, independent coordinate and theta is the other independent coordinate for the translation and rotation. This is actually the example that I'm going to show you later on with the detail, the suspension system of a car. Okay, so that's the two degree of freedom system, X and theta or Y and theta. All right, another example of a two degree of freedom system is shown here. We have this spring attached to this moving mass, and then attached to it, we have this pendulum. Again, one to take care of the position of the mass, and one to take care of the uh, rotation of this uh, rod. Uh, so X and theta are the two independent coordinates. All right, we basically want to concentrate on two degree of freedom systems and I have actually on the uh, Lightboard, uh, I have a video on Lightboard, uh, which actually I have numbers for this particular problem and uh, it shows you the detail of the, how we go about finding what we call natural frequencies and nat uh, the mode shapes. <clears throat> but anyways, let me just go through this quickly. Um, and uh, again, it's repeated in, the, in another video, the whole process. But anyways, this is a two degree of freedom system as I showed you here. So you, uh, how do we get the equations of motion? Uh, you draw a free body diagram of mass one and mass two. Start with mass two, right? And say X two is greater than X one. And then if X two is greater than X one, the force of the spring here K two would be the, uh, the deformation is X two minus X one. And since x2 is larger, so it's going to be a stretch this way, so the force is going to go the other way. All right, once you figure out that force, then action reaction, the free body diagram on mass one for the force here would be exactly the same force uh, pointing in the different direction, in the opposite direction. And then obviously this guy is a stretch k1 by x1, so we have kx1. Write the equation of motion f equal m8. Positive is like that for both masses. Take care of the direction. So this would be a negative for uh, mass two. This would be a uh, positive for mass two, mass one, and negative for mass one. So if you look at the uh, the way what I've done here, you could figure it out. And then 
after you clean it up, you get the two coupled differential equations, second order because we have second derivative, and they are homogeneous because the right-hand side is zero. So these are system of differential equations. Okay, it's not just one differential equation, and they are coupled. You see, you have both x1 and x2 here, and you have both x1 and x2 here. So you cannot solve them independently. You have to solve them as a system. Okay, let's move on to the next page. Try to wrap this up for you. So um, I've rewritten the two equations, the system of, remember, system of, what? Second order, homogeneous, some terminology here, differential equations. System of second order, homogeneous differential equations. All right. The next step is to put these two equations in the matrix form, as you could see here. So um, I call this M. This is the acceleration vector. This is the displacement vector. So you could see clearly where these guys come from here. Like this is uh, K1 plus K2 right here. This is minus K2 and then the same thing, minus K2 and a positive K2. Okay, M is called the mass matrix. K is called the stiffness matrix, right? And both, uh, note that this is important, both M and K matrices are uh, symmetric. That's very important. That's a way to check your answers, actually. If you don't come up with a symmetry, symmetry, by the way, it looks 0, 0 here, or minus K2, minus K2. Basically, symmetry means that any element, uh, AIJ should be the same as AJI. That's symmetry. So in other words, uh, here you have A, first row, second column, A12 is the same as what? A of uh, second row, first column. So A12 is the same what as A21. Okay? All right. Uh, next, uh, how do we come up with the solution uh, of this uh, system of differential equations? Well, we assume uh, an exponential, which I think somehow I erased this. Uh, I don't know why weird things happen. So we assume a solution of a some uh, vector u, which later on we, we, this becomes actually our mode shape, where we have mode shapes. And omega is, uh, is the frequency. And we already know that the solution to a mass spring system is uh, going to be... Uh, it's going to have uh, imaginary roots. So that's why we start actually with imaginary assumption. And then we need to plug this back into here. So we need x double dot here. So that's why I went through the first derivative and second derivative. Just plug in. So this is basically m x double dot, as you could see here, plus k, and this is x. And then when you clean it up, uh, without going through the detail of it, this has to be equal to zero, and the non, for a non-zero solution of u, the determinant of this matrix, which again, it probably doesn't make sense now to you, has to be equal to zero. So the next video you have to watch is the video on YouTube uh, under the uh, two degree of freedom system of masses and springs, which I'm going to actually post the, uh, it's already posted on uh, Blackboard, uh, I did it for my uh, system course uh, last fall, and fortunately, that was done earlier because I'm really uh, uh, kind of uh, stressed with time, making videos one after another, three different courses and like seven or eight videos, six, between five to eight videos per class per week. So I have to stop complaining and... Uh, so the next video would be the one on YouTube. You follow that. I'll come back with more videos and a complete solution. So actually that video to just let you know, it will show you how to determine what we call mode shapes and how to determine the natural frequencies. Uh, so we will have two natural frequencies which are called eigenvalues and two uh, mode shapes which are called eigenvectors. So the, de the detail of that would be uh, in that video. As always, thanks for watching and listening.